we have found a nice formula to compute the residue at the pole. Let us use it for a few examples in this video. So we start with f of z equals z plus 4 divided by z squared plus 1. You can uh, rewrite it as z plus 4 divided by z plus i times z minus i. So we see that we have poles uh, of order 1 at plus and minus i. And let us compute the residue at z0 equals plus i. That means that we have to find our phi of z, for example. Phi of z equals uh, z minus i times f z equals z plus 4 over z plus i. And then we can compute the residue, uh, because we have a pole of order 1, the residue at i of f of z equals, well, we don't have to differentiate, we don't have to di uh, divide by n factorial, something like that. It's just uh, phi of i at i equals, so plug in i over here and i over there, so we get i plus 4 over 2i equals 1 half minus 2i. So computing the residue at the first order pole is really easy with our formula. So let us go on with a higher order pole. So what happens in that case? Well our second function will be z cubed plus 2z over z minus i cubed. And see by inspection that we have a pole of order 3 at z equals i. So we compute our phi of z first, phi of z equals z minus i cubed times f of z, becomes very easy now, z cubed plus 2z, and then we can use our formula for a third order pole, third order pole at z0, we have to differentiate twice, plug in the uh, uh, z0 and divide by 2 factorial, so what do we get? Uh, the residue at z0 equals i is the second derivative of phi at i divided by 2 factorial, so we have to differentiate phi twice. So we differentiate z cubed plus 2z. First we get a 3 times z squared plus 2, and differentiate again, we get a 6 times z. So our residue becomes 6 times z divided by 2 factorial, and i equals 6i divided by 2 equals 3i. So there we have our residue at i from our third order pole. Let's continue with a function which is a bit more complicated, which has a log. So we have l of z equals uh, the log of z cubed divided by z squared plus i. And we have to define what our log of z is. We define it as follows. as the ln of r where r is the norm plus i times theta, uh, where we choose the uh, branch cut such that theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So uh, we choose the branch cut along the uh, real axis. Uh, then uh, the branch cut is safely away from our pole, which is for example at z0 equals minus i. So we compute the residue at minus i. Uh, after this example you can compute the residue at z0 equals plus i. And uh, just discuss uh, uh, below what the answer should be. Uh, we will do the minus i. We have a first order pole, so we go compute phi of z equals z plus i times f of z. Uh, we can um, expand z squared plus 1 as z plus i times z minus i, so our uh, phi of z becomes a log of z cubed and the z minus i is left. z plus i factors cancel out. And the residue at z equals minus i of f of z, uh, well, it's a first order pole, so we can just plug in uh, um, minus i in phi, and then we have to divide by 0 factorial, which is just 1, so we don't see it. Uh, we have to be a bit careful with plugging in the minus i. Okay, the uh, denominator is easy, which is minus i minus i yields minus 2i. For the numerator, we have to be a bit more careful. We get the log of minus i cubed. Well, what was the log of minus i? Well, it's the ln of the norm, so it's the ln of 1, plus i times the argument. We are at minus i, and notice our argument has to be between 0 and 2 pi, so our argument will be 3 pi over 2. So we get i times 3 pi over 2 cubed, and which simplifies to the uh, following expression. So you see, even if our formula is a bit more complicated, computing the ratio at the ball is still not so difficult. Fourth example, uh, we have the function of z squared times sine hyperbolic z at z0 equals 0. So well, what would be wrong? Can you do something wrong with it? Well, you can uh, have a wrong order of the pole in mind, for example. Uh, you look at the function and you think, well, it looks like a second order pole. 
So I multiply by z squared and I get here by phi of z. And then I plug in z equals zero. And then you see uh, sine hyperbolic of zero equals zero. So you get one over zero blows up. Uh, so your residue would be infinity. Well, that's not possible. And that is because you don't have a, a second order pole, but a higher order pole. So even if you do this, that wrong, if you underestimate uh, the size of the pole, then you automatically notice that because you get some infinity when you compute your uh, residue. So in that sense, it's not a problem. It's a bit sloppy, but okay, you notice and then you can uh, correct this mistake. So that's uh, what would happen if you try uh, the, the correct order, which is a third order pole. Well, your phi, that becomes z cubed times f of z equals uh, z over sine hyperbolic of z. Well, then you have a, a third order pole, so differentiate twice. Okay, that's not so nice with this function. What's easier in this case, also, also quite messy, but still the easiest, is to just to use the Laurent series. Your function equals 1 over z squared times 1 over sine hyperbolic of z. So you have to find the Laurent series of the 1 over sine hyperbolic of z, but only the first two terms, which are over here. So that computation is kind of complicated, but once you have that, you can pick out the 1 over z term, which has a coefficient of minus 1 over 6, so the residue equals minus 1 over 6. So still, this finding this Laurent series over here of the 1 over sine hyperbolic z is still kind of uh, difficult, but it's easier than just plugging in the formula. So now you have seen several examples of how to use our formula to compute the residue at the pole. And you see, uh, using this formula is actually not so hard at all.